and our seniors for the season. Behind each of our players is a supporting parent that sets high educational expectations for their daughters. They are enthusiastic, positive, demanding, but most of all, they are their daughter's number one fan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lady Dragon Volleyball team would like you to welcome their parents tonight. The parents of Senior Defense Specialist Natalia Perry, Mark and Monica Perry. The parents of Senior Defensive Specialist Alyssa Bryan, Rex and Stacy Bryan. The parents of Senior Defensive Specialist Brooklyn Johnson, Craig and Melinda Johnson. The parents of Senior Defensive Specialist, oh well, hello. The parents of Senior Middle Blocker, Caitlin Kubala, Mike and Kim Kubala. The parents of junior setter Sarah Kylan and senior outside hitter Abby Kylan, Gary Kylan and Andrea Kylan. The parents of junior outside hitter Kaylee Linton, Susie and Lee Linton. The mother of junior setter Juliana Murillo, Jessica Murillo. The parents of junior middle blocker Nitty Ers, Anil and Nita Ers. The parents of junior middle blocker Yasmina Kadic, Ileana and Goran Kadic. The parents of junior outside hitter Meredith Eady, Natalie and Gary Eady. The parents of junior center Grace Adams, Amy Adams. Oh, and she put your name down, Sean. Sean Adams. It's not on here. The parents of junior right side hitter Bailey Blackman, Jennifer and Tom Blackman. The parents of sophomore libero Jolie Plummer, Jason Plummer. The parents of junior outside hitter Lauren Malone, Greg and Lisa Malone. <laughs> the parents of junior middle blocker Alana Sellers, Tim and Julie Sellers. <laughs> the parents of junior outside hitter Emma Young and also escorting sophomore outside hitter Elle Cassidy. Robert and Lindy Young. The parents of amazing student coach Ben Mullis, Rebecca and Steve Mullis. Please give a round of the hand or a round of applause for our parents. At this time, we would also like to honor our fabulous five seniors who will compete in their last home volleyball match tonight at Round Rock High School. Each of these young ladies have been a vital part of the volleyball program over the last four years. This group of seniors have left their mark in the Round Rock Volleyball history books as they have won the district championship out of their four years. We are very proud of them as they symbolize the finest of student athletes. These five seniors are true leaders on and off the volleyball court and they all carry a collective grade point average over a 4.0. As a small token of their appreciation, the underclassmen would like to present each senior with a bouquet of flowers. Ladies and gentlemen, will you celebrate with us our first senior, Libero, Alyssa Bryant. Alyssa is a one-year letterman. She is currently planning on attending Texas A&M to study public health. She's a member of Zoe, who out the 
Beta NHS and a volunteer for Miracle League while maintaining a 4.0 GPA all four years of school. Her favorite memories in volleyball were rip-offs before games or on the bus rides home. She wants to thank all her friends, family, and coaches for supporting her throughout her volleyball career. Senior outside hitter, Abby Kylan. Abby Kylan is a three-year varsity letterman and a team captain. Abby is deciding between the University of Arkansas and Texas A&M University and plans to study pre-law. Her accomplishments include district champions freshman year, first team all district, academic all district sophomore and junior year, all central Texas newcomer of the year sophomore year, and maintaining above a 4.0 GPA all four years of high school. Her favorite memory is making it to the regional semis her sophomore year and being able to play alongside her younger sister, Sarah. Senior middle blocker, Caitlin Kubala. Caitlin is a three-year varsity letterman. She's maintained a 4.0 GPA throughout all four years of high school and received the academic all-district award her sophomore and junior year. She plans to attend Texas a and College Station for pre-med. Her favorite memories are Coach Watson's Daisy. And some of her hilarious comments. She would like to thank her friends, family, teammates, and coaches for these memories throughout her volleyball career. Libera Natalia Perry. Natalia is a two-year varsity letterman and a team captain this year. She's maintained a 4.0 all four years of high school and received the Academic All District Award her junior year. She's also a member of National Honors, National Spanish Honor Society. Natalia will be attending Aurora University in Chicago, Illinois to continue her education and volleyball career and plans to major in biology. Her favorite memory is deep dog ditching the coach's cabin in New Braunfels her junior year. We never got caught, quote unquote. She is blessed to be a part of a competitive and successful program and thanks to the coaching staff and her teammates for the unforgettable memory. And senior libero Brooklyn Johnson. Brooklyn is a one-year letterman and plans on going to college and majoring in kinesiology. She is a member of the National Honor Society and has maintained a 4.0 GPA all four years of high school. Her favorite memories include the bus rides to and from the volleyball games and staying in the cabins at the New Braunfels tournament. She's very grateful for the memories and friendships she has made while playing volleyball at Brown Arc High School. Ladies and gentlemen, please give all of our parents and our seniors a round of applause. In a few minutes, we will have the starting lineup for each team. At this time, we ask that you please rise for our national anthem, sung by Erwin Files.
Crosby. He was a beloved football and basketball coach here at Brown Rock High School, but he was much more than a coach. He was a mentor, a leader, a brother, a son, and a loyal friend. Coach Roberts was heavily invested in the players he coached and impacted. He pushed them beyond the boundaries, beyond their boundaries that they set for themselves by their perception of their abilities and potential, and by others. Even though Coach Rob maintained a no-nonsense persona on the field, he had a way of kicking back with his students, inspiring them in his notorious Fresh Teacher Friday swag. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please take a moment of silence to honor Coach Roberts and the legacy that he left behind for all of the young lives that he has touched. We love you, Coach Roberts, and we play for you tonight. Crystal Overton and Jesse Menfrom. 
Great, good luck to both teams. Everybody. Welcome uh, to another night of exciting Round Rock Volleyball. I'm Dallin, your host, and we are with K-Max Sports tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, tonight is Round Rock versus the Stony Point Tigers. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to uh, this match because if they win tonight, I don't want to jinx anybody, but let's go ahead and call it. If they win tonight, they pretty much clinch playoffs. Now, we'll get more into that here uh, in, in a few minutes and a little bit later on throughout the game. But tonight we play the Stony Point Lady Tigers, and your Round Rock Lady Dragons are looking for a big win. They had a big win Tuesday night versus Leander, a 3-0 win. And uh, right now there's pretty much a three-way tie uh, at the top of district. Um, there's about three teams that can kind of breathe easy right now uh, as far as uh, clinching or making playoffs, but it's not 100% set in stone. What that means is basically the Round Rock Lady Dragons need a win tonight to uh, pretty much make it definite and to clinch it. And uh, small, small possibilities throughout district tonight if there are a few upsets and then possibly maybe one or two upsets on Tuesday night following the next week, then we might have uh, more to talk about. But as far as tonight goes, uh, we're pretty much uh, a safe bet to say we might be in, but uh, a win tonight will almost definitely clinch it. So... A lot to look forward to, and a lot is riding on tonight. Speaking of tonight, it's a pretty special night because tonight was senior night. And uh, as I go through the roster later on, I'll be sure to honor our seniors that are playing because it's a little bittersweet. This is actually uh, the last home game during just regular season play for our seniors. But here we go. Stony Point will uh, lead us off with the first serve. Yeah, and a nice tip. And that will be the first point to the Round Rock Dragons. And that's Grace Adams, the junior. And throughout the match tonight, I will break down uh, what I mean by a certain terminology when it comes to spike and kill and hit and uh, dig, jousting. We're talking about, we're going to talk about uh, soft hands. We're going to talk about tips. But here we go. And so far, a little bit of back and forth. And that's going to be a tad deep outside. So one more point for your Round Rock Lady Dragons. And after a little bit of back and forth play, Stony, Stony uh, Point Tigers went just a little bit too deep. And a beautiful serve by number 14, Yasmina Kedik. Kedik, the junior middle blocker. So we're going to see a lot of action from her tonight. Anytime you are the middle blocker on any volleyball team, you are sure to see a lot of action on the net. But right now, she's playing back a little bit after serving. And that will be out of bounds off of Stony Point. So right now, we have a 4-0 run so far to start off the game and to start off the night. We are in the very first match. It is a race to three, basically a best of five. And a beautiful serve, barely rolling over the net after a tip. Those net rolling serves are so dirty and so deceitful. And a nice kill. Let me see if I can see the jersey number real fast. I believe that was uh, Lauren Malone. And Lauren Malone is number 17, our junior outside hitter. You will definitely hear her name called quite a bit tonight. So going back to what I was saying uh, about breaking down uh, what's going to happen in the district uh, throughout, basically throughout district, and also for uh, playoffs as well. So tonight we're looking at uh, playing Sony Point. Sony Point, they're kind of at the bottom of the list when it comes to uh, the standings. Uh, I want to say they are maybe second to last, third to last, I'm not really sure. But you cannot dismiss them. You cannot rule them out just because they are way down there and uh, Round Rock is way up here. Round Rock is uh, sitting uh, around second or third. But um, Stony Point, they are a rival school. They are just right around the corner from, from Round Rock. So keep that in mind. Uh, they are rivals in more ways than just volleyball. So uh, you, ne you never want to rule anybody out. And um, 
Seeing as how Stony, uh, Stony Point cannot make playoffs, they really have nothing to lose. They're playing for fun. And the seniors especially want to get in the last few good uh, memories. So uh, that could be a definitely uh, be a da dangerous combination. So lots to look forward to tonight. Going to be pretty competitive. Stony Point going to do everything they can to ruin the hopes of the Lady Dragons and their playoff berth. And speaking of tips, a beautiful tip by Sarah Kylan, number four, the junior setter. You hear us talk about Sarah and Abby Kylan all the time. I personally like to call it the Kylan Connection. Unfortunately, Abby Kylan is a senior this year, number five, Abby. She is the outside hitter. And been with this program since as long as I've been announcing for, for uh, Round Rock. And a beautiful block by the Dragons. So right now in the net you have uh, Lauren Malone and Alana Sellers, both juniors. One an outside hitter, one a middle blocker. But the great thing about being a hitter or a blocker is you technically are both. And that was a beautiful set by uh, Sarah Kylan. And to finish off uh, the kill by Alana Sellers. So here we go. And Sarah Kylan to serve. Serves it deep to the back line. And Stony Point trying to set up their offense, but barely uh, gets it over with any kind of attack. And that will be a block out of bounds. So a nice block attempt by the Dragons. But unfortunately, sometimes when you do a block, you don't really know how it's going to bounce off of your hands. And uh, it will land out of bounds for a point. So here we go, two serving eight. Round Rock Lady Dragons are up. And that will be a point for the Lady Dragons. And here we go, number 17, the junior outside hitter, Lauren Malone, getting ready to serve. It is nine serving two. Oh, a little bit of a flat serve, almost a knuckleball with a slight curve to it. Knuckleball, uh, pretty much uh, a baseball term there, but I promise you the knuckleball is real when it comes to volleyball. Uh, and the serve uh, mainly is where you see that. And I'll explain myself a little bit better here after this point. But here we go, both teams are scrambling. And a tip attempt by the Tigers but the Round Rock Dragons keep it alive and a beautiful job by Abby Collin on the net she literally owned that net she was jousting back and forth uh, three different times between two different players keeping it alive and a last second effort she's able to uh, deflect it off of the defender's hands so great job Abby Collin playing like a senior night because she is a senior And a beautiful one-headed save by your defensive specialist, your very own uh, libero, Jolie Plummer. So we now have 12 serving two. Amazing job of the Lady Dragons starting off to a great start. You know, they had uh, all confidence coming into tonight's game to pretty much uh, come in and pounce. Uh, try to end it quickly, 3-0. And clinch that playoff berth. But I was not expecting 13 serving two in the very first match. But here we go. And that's number three, Brooklyn Johnson, the senior defensive specialist. So when you are a defensive specialist, a lot of times, uh, I'm going to break down some uh, positions for you here. I know we're a little bit late in the season, but hey, you never know. We might have some new fans watching tonight. Or maybe some of you uh, at home would like to uh, know a little bit of strategy when it comes to positions. But I'm going to break that down for you a little bit throughout the matches tonight. A beautiful serve. Oh my god, we call that an ace, ladies and gentlemen. Heck yeah. And that was a low dropping knuckleball. So going back to the knuckleball, anytime you serve, uh, you know, like I said, it's a baseball term. Uh, the knuckleball in baseball is a, is a pitch where it has very little rotation or spin on it. This completely throws off the batter. Guess what? It happens in volleyball as well. When you can serve a volleyball, and you can read the letters and see the colors, uh, that sucker is moving on you. When there is no spin to it, it is not cutting through the wind. There's actually more wind 
uh, that's actually going against it. So it's pretty crazy. It truly, really is moving side to side, up and down. You almost cannot get a beat on it. And unfortunately, at the last second, you, you know, so many times you're used to a ball with a, a lot of spin or a lot of speed coming at you, and you time it and you're ready for it. A ball that is floating towards you with no spin is liable to drop at any second. That is what is so deadly about the knuckleball when you serve in volleyball. So tonight when you hear me talk about a knuckle serve or a, or a dropping serve, a lot of times uh, that's actually done on purpose. So you don't always want the hardest serve or uh, the most amount of spin because you easily can trick a defender with a ball that is just moving back and forth and they can't get a beat on it. All right, here we go, 15 to two. And a beautiful sliding save by your very own libero, number eight, Jolie Plummer, the sophomore. And that's one more point for the Dragons, 16 serving two. So those of you watching at home, you might be able to see that the libero, number eight, is wearing a different color jersey. Same thing for uh, Stony Temple. Their libero is wearing a pink jersey. And again, uh, some of you who are volleyball pros are probably cringing right now. Real fast, going back to the score. 17 to two, Lady Dragons continue to extend their lead. They are dominating this very first match. Uh, uh, amazingly, uh, Stony Temple is doing their best to keep it alive, but they just can't do anything offensively. And that almost landed on the line, but a little deep. So one more point for the Dragons. 18 serving two. It is a race to 25. Every match is a race to 25, and uh, every game is a race to three best out of five. But keep in mind, you want to win by two. But going back to uh, the libero position. Basically, you are a defensive specialist. Uh, the reason you wear a different color jersey is uh, not because you're a captain or because you have a better sense of fashion. It's actually um, to help the, uh, the referees see who the libero is, uh, not to mention really your own team and the other team as well. But going back to what the libero does, oh, a nice soft tip attempt by Abby Kylan. Unfortunately, this time it does not go over, so just a little short. But we have four serving 18 as Stony Temple gets ready to serve. Tiger serve it up. And now it's Sarah Kylan setting up a lot of sellers. And a beautiful block by the Tigers, actually. So one more point for Stony Point and five serving 18. A beautiful back set by, oh, nicely done by Sarah Kylan. So a beautiful back set by Kylan to Grace Adams, the junior. And Grace actually did a beautiful tip. And going back to a little bit of terminology, a tip is a nice soft fingertip touch that barely goes right over the net. Sometimes you can pinpoint the placement. But you got to make sure it's not a carry. So it's one of those... Uh, very uh, intricate, detailed, soft hands kind of move where uh, you got to be careful to make sure you're not lifting the ball and throwing it. So easier said than done to tip it. One more point for the Dragons. 20 serving five. And going back to the libero, the libero is actually serving right now. Your very own number eight, Jolie Plummer, the sophomore. So what a libero is or what a libero does, you are the defensive specialist that it's actually very rare in sports, but you are one of the few positions in all of sports where you are playing offense and defense at the very exact same time. 21 serving five, Plummer serves it deep. And the Tigers get it back over, but not a whole lot of velocity. I don't know if they're lacking the height or the power or just the timing, but the Tigers just cannot get that downward kill or at least that uh, that nice top spin to uh, curve it over. But here we go one more time. 22 serving five, the libero, Jolie Plummer. And again into the net. One more point for the Dragons. So Jolie Plummer, your libero, what a libero does is uh, going back to uh, one of the few positions in any sport where you play both offense and defense. Basically imagine the other team spiking it. 
most of the time they spike it to the back line. You as a libero, it is your job to not only save that ball from hitting the court and saving a point, you have to try your best to get that ball as high up in the air or back to the middle of the court as possible. That way your setter can get to it and make it an easier job for your setter to then set your hitter. So keep in mind, it is a three-step combination or a three-step uh, program, if you will, um, to, to complete a solid point uh, when it comes to offensive volleyball. And it all starts with your libero or with your defensive specialist playing back row. So again, they're not only just trying to keep the ball from hitting the court, they're trying to get the ball up high, back up in the middle, right back to the setter every time. Easier said than done, ladies and gentlemen. It's called playing defense and offense at the same exact time. And that being said, that's exactly what she did. A sliding save uh, right back to the, the setter, Sarah Collin, to set up for the point. And that's how they finish off the very uh, first match. So here we go, 25-6. to six. Your Lady Dragons take the first match. Two more matches, and they will win the game for the night. Uh, keep in mind, we're looking for playoff berth tonight. Uh... It's safe to say we think we're kind of in, but the last thing I want to do is jinx anyone. You know what it comes, uh, you know how it comes to, to sports. There's a lot of superstition when it comes to uh, playing sports. So the last thing we want to do is jinx anybody, but uh, like I said, uh, we're pretty much uh, safe to say we may play offs, but a win tonight will uh, pretty much clinch it. So the first match goes to your very own uh, Round Rock Lady Dragons. Uh, pretty easily, 25-6 to six actually. As we look forward to uh, the second match here coming up in two or three minutes, we'll basically recap what happened in match one. Match one was completely dominant by Round Rock. Here's the thing. Uh, they had a few back and forths. Um, Stony Temple, they're definitely hustling. Um, they're not really lacking uh, the, the hustle. They're there every time, any time a ball lands. I feel like what they are, are not really executing is just setting up their own offense and uh, setting up more attacks, hoping for a kill. Uh, that being said, uh, they're they're trying to attack from the middle instead of the front, and um, they're coming up pretty short. Now, as far as round rod goes, we were doing almost everything right, uh, even when we were tipping the ball. So going back to volleyball terminology, an attack is basically anytime you do a hard spike attempt. And a kill is basically when you finish off that point. Um, but like I said earlier, sometimes you want to do a soft fingertip tip. Uh, you know, sometimes a little bit of finesse, a little bit of the soft touch is what gets the job done. So if you have two uh, blockers, say a middle blocker and outside blocker, right in your face, um, and you know they're going to be there, depending on the trajectory of the ball, depending on your timing, depending on how you can jump, sometimes... Uh, you know, if they have your number or if they already have the jump on you, you don't really want to try for a hard swing and take the chance of uh, them blocking. Every now and again, you can do a soft tip and go over them or even uh, maybe go to the side and try to go for the sideline. Um, uh, earlier, you mentioned me, uh, or sorry, earlier you heard me mention um, Abby Kylan doing a little bit of jousting on the net. Anytime you hear me talk about jousting, it's basically when two players on opposite teams are going back and forth on the net. So a lot of times they'll try to tip it over. Another one will block and tip it back over. Unfortunately, this soft tipping, it makes it very hard for you to bump it back to your team and try to set up for a set, uh, maybe set up for an attack. So um, I, I, again, a lot of times you'll see middle blockers, outside blockers, and outside hitters. They're tipping it back and forth to each other, not because they're trying to really get a point, but because really they're just blocking one another. Uh, and we call that jousting. And a lot of times they'll joust back and forth for two or three tips, and next thing you know, uh, one person makes a mistake or the ball falls where it may. And here we go. We are just moments away from starting match two. Want to give a big shout-out to Coach Diane Watson. I personally have dubbed her Coach Khaleesi, the mother of dragons herself. Here's the reason why. She comes into this season every year not only wanting to make playoffs, she fully expects it. What I mean by that is they really make playoffs almost every time that she coaches. Uh, aside from that, they are district champs uh, pretty much year after year. Uh, I want to say even, uh, I mean, even joining this team as a freshman. 
by the time you leave as a senior, you get to brag about visiting multiple district championships, if not winning them. And you know, like I said, Coach Khaleesi, the mother of Dragons, Diane Watson is our head coach. And our assistant coaches are Chrissy Dreyer, Crystal Overton, and Jesse Munfram. But here we go. Stony Point up one to nothing so far in the second match. And going back to the tips. And again, number four, Sarah Kylan, the junior, tips it over. And those of you watching at home, not just listening, you can see yourself, she tipped it right over the blocker who was ready. And that's the thing, sometimes when you just know you don't have the height, the timing, the, the speed, the jump, whatever it is, sometimes if you know the moment just isn't right or isn't perfect, that's when you keep your feet planted, that's when you look at the court on the other side of the net, you kind of read the court, and uh, that's when you get a little strategic, and you, and you do a little bit more finesse, a little bit more ball placement. Here we go, one serving two. And Stony Temple tries to set up. Oh, beautiful block by number 17, Lauren Malone, yeah. We had double blockers on the net there that time. That was number 16, Caitlin Kubala, the senior middle blocker. And then number 17, Lauren Malone. And I think it was Malone that came up with the block that time. But either way, both girls were there. Nothing more intimidating than seeing both of those girls right in your face on the net, ready for you, before you even have a chance to swing. And here we go, number two, Alyssa Bryan, the senior, gets ready to serve. And the Tigers, they attempt their own tip. But the Dragons are completely ready for it that time. Sony Point sliding all over the place, diving, trying to keep it alive. They barely get it over. A beautiful save by number one, Natalia Perry. And that's Kylie with the one-handed save, getting it back to her teammate Perry. Perry gets it over. Oh, they're going to call, I believe, was that a double or was that a net call? I believe it was a double. And that's one more point for the Dragons. It is now four serving one. And one more time, Alyssa Bryan to serve. And finally, a pretty uh, strong hit from the Tigers. But the Dragons, they are all over it. And they send it right back over. A sliding dig by Bryan. Keeping it alive. Brian bumps it right back to Malone. And Malone with the attack, sending it over. And the Tigers send it too deep. They are out of bounds. One more point for your Lady Dragons. We now have five serving one. Ladies and gentlemen, they are all over this court. Uh, believe me when I tell you, the Tigers are making them earn it. Uh, do not be fooled by uh, the standings in district. And do not be fooled by the score tonight because these Lady Dragons are definitely scrambling and hustling and they are making every play happen one more point six serving one here we go Alyssa Bryan the senior number two defensive specialist going on a great serving run right now and unfortunately for the Tigers they keep coming up short and hitting the net quite a bit on their attacks. Meanwhile, us Lady Dragons, we're going to keep taking advantage of that. Seven serving one. Alyssa Bryan, one more time to serve. Oh, a beautiful block and then a save by Malone. Oh, my goodness. So, unfortunately, the ball did not favor. Malone save. But here we go, two serving seven. And a back set by number 10, Grace Adams. And once more, the Tigers go a little too deep outside off the back line.
All right, we made quite a few subs now. We uh, sub out pretty much half the team. And coming back in is your defensive specialist in Libero, number eight, Jolie Plummer. Beautiful serve by number four, the junior, Sarah Kylan. And a nice attack by number 17 for the Tigers. And that's Brittany Garcia getting the point. Brittany Garcia is 5'11", senior, so I can see, uh, I can definitely see the Tigers wanting to feed her the ball as much as possible tonight. But so far, the Tigers are coming up short when it comes to attacking. They either cannot get the power behind the ball or behind the hit. Or, unfortunately uh, for them, they keep coming up short and hitting the net. So after a few subs coming in and out for both teams, we now have three serving eight. Dragons are up by five. This is the second game. Excuse me, second uh, match. And keep in mind, we uh, played a 25, one by two. It is a race to three, best out of five. Round Rock Lady Dragons took the first game. Kylan with a back set to Malone. Beautiful job, powerful hit. And that's the great thing about having power behind your hit. Even though the blocker was there for the Tigers, again, when you're a blocker, you do your best to try and set your hands at a certain angle, hoping you can block it back to, to you know, inbounds and back to the other side. But really, when there's that much power behind it, you don't know where it's going to go. Nine serving three. And that's Grace Adams keeping it alive. And that's Kylan to Kylan, the Kylan connection. And a little bit of back and forth here, a nice rally, still keeping it alive. And now will be a lift on the Tigers. A lift meaning uh, they either use the uh, palm of their hand or their fingertips to cradle the ball uh, to bump it up instead of um, using their fist or wrist or forearm. Remember, it's all about bumping and hitting. You're not allowed to cradle the ball in your palm and throw it or lift it. And that will be another, wow, so here we go. They have the Sony Temple Pilot, excuse me, Sony Temple, <laughs> is, uh, I'm cracking up over here. I hate to laugh, but uh, there's too many lift calls over here on the Tigers. Uh, the Sony Temple Tigers, uh, they, they basically are, I mean, they're, they're scrambling all over the place trying to get to the ball, and unfortunately, they're doing double hits and doing lifts. Not something you see too often at this level of play, um, but it is what it is, and you got to give kudos to the refs for uh, spotting every time and calling it. All right, here we go. Four serving 11. So a beautiful serve there by number six. And that is Lucy Vasquez, 5'11 freshman for the Tigers. Stony Temple Tigers serve one more time. This is out of bounds. So one more point for your Lady Dragons. We now have 12 serving five. And it looks like your libero is getting ready to serve. So keep in mind to recap what libero means is uh, you are the defensive specialist where basically every play almost starts with you, or ideally you want it to start with you. Oh my goodness, speaking of, <laughs> a beautiful serve. We call that an ace, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a nice knuckle uh, serve dropping, and not even the front row could get to it. Oh, and unfortunately she serves that one out of bounds. A little bit of tit for tat, and it all kind of bounces out there. But here we go, six serving 13, Stony Temple. Gets ready to serve. But yeah, going back to uh, Jolie Plummer, I got to give it up to her. Uh, when you are the libero, your name might not get called as much <laughs> as uh, the, the, the tall six-foot outside hitters and the six-foot middle blockers. You know, um, it is what it is, but 
I cannot stress enough, never, ever, ever downplay the short girl playing middle back row because she is the one playing offense and defense at the exact same time every time. So you hear the crowd go wild. That's because of number 15, Nidhi Erse. The junior middle blocker with a beautiful kill. Crushing the other team actually on that point. Stony Temple, they get it back. Seven serving, 14. Uh, they're going to call that a double. So anytime you see somebody go for a set, and the set just looks weird. I mean, it looks like they caught it and threw it. Uh, you actually would call that a double. Um, not so much a carry or a lift or anything, but uh, you would call that a double because technically you're hitting it twice to change the trajectory. I, you know, it's, a, it's one of those things where um, the controversy lies in the terminology. Believe me, volleyball gurus for decades would much rather call a lift or a carry or something else. But, uh, yeah, a lot of times when a setter is trying to get too much of a perfect set and they look like they're catching and throwing the ball, technically you call it a double because uh, it looks like they hit it with one hand than the other. Grace Adams setting up Malone and a beautiful hit. Lots of power, lots of spin as well, right towards the right sideline. And that's going to be one more point. We've got 16 serving nine. Number two comes into the game, Alyssa Bryan. Again, it is senior night, so you want to get as much playing time for your seniors as possible, especially tonight. Seeing as how uh, we might be coasting our way to a playoff berth if we can clinch and get the win tonight. Again, the last thing you want to do is jinx anyone. But we are up 17 to nine, and a timeout is called. So I'm not really sure what Sony uh, Point could be saying in their huddle. If nothing else, embrace every last moment. Like we keep saying, senior night for Round Rock. I'm not really sure what senior night was or is for Sony Point. But to me, if you're a senior, uh, em embrace every moment, every game. Enjoy every point. Even if you're down by, let's say, 17 to 9 like it is right now. Let's say you get a really good point. And the next one. That's something you can take with you forever. And that's the beautiful thing about youth sports. They're playing literally just for the fun, literally just for themselves. Um, it's one of those things where it's like the last little bit of innocence that we see in sports. And that's a beautiful thing that we see with youth uh, when it comes to playing uh, games and sports and a little bit of camaraderie uh, that they bring to the table. Because uh, they really truly are playing for the love of the game. They're playing for each other. And, of course, they're always playing for the win. Here we go, 17 serving 9. Lady Dragons are up here in uh, the second match. And that will be a point for the Tigers. And the Stony Point Tigers with a deep serve. Adams to Malone. Oh, a beautiful hit, rolling over the net, but somehow the Tigers are able to get to it. And once more, your very own number four, Sarah Kylan, with a strategic, beautiful, almost like a rolling tip that time to get just over the defenders. Sarah Kylan, she definitely has their number tonight. Uh, the blockers, uh, outside blocker, middle blocker for the um, Tigers, they're doing everything they can to try and approach the net and be aggressive. But that's the great thing about reading the court. If you can look through the net and look to the other side of the court and see what your opponent is about to do, if you have the, not only the speed and the skill to do this, right before you address the ball and hit, uh, you are that much more dangerous. And that also gives you a better assessment of whether or not you want to do a strong hit, go for that attack, or if you want to tip it, much like Sarah Kylan has done all night long. Sarah Kylan alone has probably uh, six or seven points just from tipping it over the defense tonight. 
instead of trying to go for power and swinging hard. And speaking of Sarah Kylan, she swings hard that time for a deep serve to the back line. The Tigers barely keep it alive and send it back over. And a nice, powerful kill by number 17, Lauren Malone. The junior outside hitter finishing off that point. 21 serving 10. So even though it's been pretty dominant for the Lady Dragons so far in the first match and the second match as well, uh, the Tigers are actually looking a little more alive. And they actually scored more points this match versus uh, match one. So here we go, 11 serving 21. And that will be out of bounds. And a good eye by Jolie Plummer. You can tell she wanted to hit it. She's aggressive, she's eager, she wants to play, but she's also very smart. And she let that one go by for an easy point. So here we go, 22 serving 11. And number three, the senior Brooklyn Johnson to serve. Oh, right on the corner, literally bouncing on the corner of the back line and the sideline. Probably the most deadly serve in all of the uh, volleyball. Maybe, maybe the net rollers. You know what? I, I take that back. The net rolling serve is probably the most dangerous. Oh, and a tip blocking attempt by the Tigers, but it will fall short. One more point for your Lady Dragons. And one more time, the senior Johnson gets ready to serve. And this should be match point. 24 serving 11. A beautiful serve, lots of top spin. Rolling down for a nice bomb. And unfortunately, the middle uh, back row cannot get to it for the Tigers. But fortunately for us Lady Dragons, it's one more win. We are now one win away from clinching. One win away from taking it tonight. We are now two to zero in matches. One more win, one more uh, one more match, and that will be three to zero. And that will be a win for the Lady Dragons. So again, to quickly recap, first match was 25 to six, Round Rock. And then the second match, 25 to 11, Round Rock again. And it seems like Stony Temple might be sort of trying to figure it out. But unfortunately for them, this is their last chance, their last match uh, to lose. They have to win the next three. Uh, going back to uh, standings, uh, some uh, point, they basically are, like I said, you know, bottom two, bottom three. Um, but as far as district and playoffs go, Round Rock is in the top three among them. Uh, it, it's a very close race. Uh, unless we see a couple of upsets uh, tonight around district and maybe one or two upsets on Tuesday, uh, you can look at the standings, and it's a pretty safe bet to see uh, the top four teams that are going to go so far. And you can definitely count Round Rock as one of those teams. But we are a minute and a half away from uh, entering the third match. One more win for the Lady Dragons, and they will take the game for the night and also clinch that playoff berth as well. Again, it is senior night, so a little bit bittersweet. It is the last home game of regular play, regular season play for all seniors. So it's not the last game for the seniors. You know, we still have a couple of away games. Uh, you know, we got Tuesday to look forward to. We have playoffs to look forward to. So it might not even be the last home game, but it is the last home game as far as regular season goes. So again, uh, going back to what I was saying, um, every moment counts. Got to savor it. Got to make it last. And a great job by uh, Coach Diane Watson with uh, make sure, making sure all the seniors get a chance to play tonight. It definitely works out in their favor to play uh, Stony Point, who um, is a big-time rival, and they always bring it when they can. 
but just uh, this time, this year, it wasn't, wasn't their season for volleyball. So it's a great night to have senior night and to let all the seniors get some really good playing time. Some last great photos and videos and memories for the parents. Okay, and here we go. Match three is about to be underway. So far, first two matches go to your very own Round Rock Lady Dragons. And Stony Point Tigers get ready to serve. Oh, and a nice kill by the Tigers for a change. There we go. That's the power and the kill they were looking for. So they're trying to make it a match. So they're up one to nothing in this third match. And possibly the final match if Round Rock wins. And once more the tip, but the Tigers are ready this time. Maybe their coach was actually uh, talking about that in the timeout break and in between games. As far as the Tigers go, their back row needs to do a better job of uh, looking out for those tips that go over the, um, the front row middle blockers and outside blockers. So two to nothing already. Tigers take the lead. And Grace Adams with a back set to Kylan. Sarah Kylan with a nice shot to the back corner. And the Tigers, they set up. And a nice kill by number 14. There you go. Beautiful job. Way to finish it off, Yasmina Kadik. The blocker was there, but it was off of her hands. And that's the great thing about having power behind your hit, is uh, the blocker can be there all day long. The blocker can premeditate what you're going to do. But if you have power behind your hit, Good luck. You don't know where the ball is going to land. So, Oh, nicely done. A deep serve to the back line. They're able to get their hands on it. But they do uh, hit out of bounds. So out of bounds on the Tigers. One more point for the Lady Dragons. We now have two serving two. We are all tied up. Speaking of two, it is Alyssa Bryan, number two, serving. And I believe that might have been a net call. So three serving two. Lady Dragons take the lead. And senior Alyssa Bryan gets ready to serve. And a nice floating knuckle serve to the back line. Oh, a lot of tips, a lot of fingertips, and a lot of cradling back and forth between both teams. A little bit of jousting there. But unfortunately, it will fall short on the dragon side. One more point for the Tigers. We now have three serving three. And Brian sets it up. Emma Young, the junior outside hitter. Once again, Young keeping it alive. Oh, a nice kill by the Tigers. Number 15 on the Tigers, by far their tallest girl, so. Not sure where she's been the first two matches, but she's all over in this match and sitting right in the middle. And a beautiful shot from the back row by Sarah Kylan. Or excuse me, Abby Kylan, number five. These Kylan sisters, they're so great at volleyball. They're all over the court. They're so fast. They can do everything. It's so confusing <laughs> to see both of them touch the ball, especially when they go back and forth. I love it and hate it at the same time when you see one Kylan sister pass it to another and then she sets it to the right back to the other sister. And that's what I mean by the Kylan connection and that's what I mean by uh, the talent in this family. Beautiful block there by number 16. And that's Caitlin Kubala. I'm not sure what the reps are calling here, but they're going to call it a point for the Lady Dragons. So we will take it five serving four. And Sarah Kylan, the junior, gets ready to serve. And Stony Point, they get ready to set up. 
One more tip by the Dragons, but again, the Tigers, they're finally starting to read it. A whistle blown, a net call, and that will be net on the Dragons, I believe. So, yeah, it's going to be a point for the Tigers. And there we go, five to every five. Tigers serve, they're scrambling to keep it alive. They set up their offense right back to the Dragons. And a beautiful hit. Great job by number six, Emmy Young, the junior, powering through both blockers. The blockers were there, they had hands on it, but it rolled right off their fingertips and landed on the Tiger side for one more point for your Dragons. Here we go, six serving five. Number three, the senior Brooklyn Johnson is ready to serve. You know, I pick on Stony Point all the time. I uh, call them the Stony Temple Pilots a lot through multiple sports. <laughs> and in fact, that's one of their intros uh, during some of their games. I forget if it's baseball or football. But it's an ongoing joke that we have when we announce. <laughs> so forgive me if uh, you hear me say, uh, call them the Stony Temple Pilots, because we do that quite often. And one more uh, ace for the Lady Dragons. Again, the Stony Point Tigers trying their best to do a sliding save, a sliding dig to make a play on it, but they really just can't. Uh, it's, it's something that these serves are dropping. And again, two in a row, one more time, a dropping serve. And that's what I mean earlier when I was talking about those dropping serves, those floating serves, that knuckleball serve. You would rather, rather that ball come flying at you at like 80 miles per hour with some spin on it than even floating at like 20 miles an hour with no spin. I'm telling you right now, a floating ball coming at you to where you can read the letters and see the stitching, uh, it, it confuses you. Uh, not just with, with wind, trajectory, but just, just your optical illusion with how your eyes are looking at it. There's something about a ball not spinning that is just floating towards you. And that, I promise you that sucker is moving left, right, up and down. And that's something that the Round Rock Lady Dragons have done pretty well tonight. If you go back and watch some of the game film later on, or if you're watching tonight, you will see a lot of the balls dropping just short of the front line or in the middle just short of the back line. This is by design. It's by no accident. This is definitely something they are practicing over and over again because it is effective. Again, volleyball is not one of those games where power wins every single time. A power swing, a power attack isn't always the answer. Sometimes you've got to do a soft tip or a soft touch. And every now and again, a power serve isn't the answer. You've got to do that nice, soft, floating knuckle serve that confuses the defense. But here we go. Speaking of serving, she is on a serving run right now. That's number three, Brooklyn Johnson. One more time with a powerful serve. And that is three in a row by Johnson, your very own senior defensive specialist, is serving it up offensively right now. Uh, she must be in the head of the back row because, uh, I mean, you know how it is with any sport. Once you kind of get in a slump or once you sort of get in a rut, it, it's hard to get out of it. And that basically is what happened to the back row of the uh, Stony Point Tigers. Three serves in the row to the back row, and they dumped every single one of them. A little bit of back and forth. Here we go. A sliding save attempt by the Tigers, but no, the Dragons were a little bit too much. And that point will go to Abby Kylan, the senior that time. So a beautiful job. If you'll notice that hit by Kylan, it wasn't a power swing. It wasn't even a tip. It was basically just a hit to the back left corner because she read the court. If you are a hitter who not only has the, the middle capacity of thinking about looking at the court first, but you had the athletic ability to create the timing and create that, that play, uh, it, it is so valuable to how you're going to set up how you want to swing or how you want to deliver that ball for the attack. And speaking of attack, number 16, there you go, Kayla Kubala. But somehow the Tigers keep it alive. Oh no, they're going to call a net call on the Dragons. That will be a point for the Tigers. 
But again, going back to what I was saying about ball placement, uh, great job for that last point by Abby Kylan. Sometimes you want to look to the other side of the court and see, not just see if there's a hole, but you're kind of looking to see what the blockers are about to do or maybe uh, to see what the back line is about to do. If you see their momentum going one way, you're able to premeditate where their momentum is going and then you can hit the ball in the opposite direction. So again, uh, going back to what I mean by reading the court, if you're able to look through the net at a glance and just see the court real fast before you either swing or before you tip it, that increases your chances greatly. Uh, I don't have an exact number behind me to, to back that up, but I'm going to go ahead and call it 70%. I mean, more than half the time. If you can just look at the other side of the court, uh, it will definitely uh, mean success anytime you address the ball or anytime you want to hit. Here we go, 13 serving nine. Lady Dragons are up here in this third set. The third match of the game. Again, it is a race to three, best of five. We are already up two to nothing. So two sets to zero. If we make this a third set and a third win, that will be the game and that will be playoff berth as well. And the Tigers are able to get it back over, but just barely bumping it back over. And they send it out of bounds. One more point for the Lady Dragons. 14 serving nine. And Jolie Plummer gets ready to serve again. And the lefty with a beautiful serve, lots of spin. Tigers able to answer. And a nice swing hit by number nine, Bailey Blackman, the junior right hitter. 15 serving nine. So while I had the chance, in case you didn't tune in earlier to hear uh, the roster being called, but I want to give a chance to, or excuse me, take a chance to give a shout out to everyone playing tonight in the starting roster, especially the seniors. Number one, Natalia Perry, the senior. Number two, Alyssa Bryan, also a senior. Number three, Brooke, uh, Brooklyn Johnson, senior as well. Number four, Sarah Kylan. Number five, Abby Kylan, the senior. Number six, Emma Young, junior. Number seven, Kaylee Linton, Jr. Number eight, Jolie Plummer, sophomore. Number nine, Bailey Blackman, Jr. Number 10, Grace Adams, Jr. Number 11, L. Cassidy, sophomore. Number 12, Juliana Murillo, Jr. Number 13, Meredith Eddy, Jr. Number 14, Yasmina Kadik, Jr. Number 15, Needy Erse, Jr. as well. Number 16, Kaylee Kubala, your last senior of the night. And number 17, Lauren Malone, Junior and number 18, Alana uh, Sellers Jr. as well. So again, one more shout out to all the seniors because it is senior night tonight. We are honoring all the seniors and their parents as well. Number 17, Lauren, uh, me, number 16, sorry. Number 16, Caitlin Kubala, uh, a senior. And also number five, Abby Kylan. Number three, Brooklyn Johnson. Number two, Alyssa Bryan. And number one, Natalia Perry. So again, thank you to all seniors for not just a, a great season, but for so many great years of volleyball with Round Rock. Keep in mind, ladies and gen uh, gentlemen, it's not just the varsity team that does well. Uh, the freshmen do well. Uh, the JV teams, uh, both maroon and white, they do well. Um, we have freshmen on uh, the teams that play every year, and even when they become seniors. By the time they graduate, they get a chance to brag about three or four different uh, district championships that they've been to, whether it be freshman, JV, senior. So again, the entire program led by your very own Coach Khaleesi herself, Diane Watson. JV Maroon is Chrissy Dreyer. JV White is Crystal Overton. And freshman team is Jesse Munfram. So again, uh, big props to the entire coaching staff of Round Rock Lady Dragon Volleyball because uh, every team does well. Every team looks for playoffs. And by the time you make it to varsity, whether you are a sophomore, a junior, a senior, or whatever, you have a lot to look forward to and a lot of memories to take home with you as well. That will last a lifetime. 
All right, here we go. 18 serving 12. So far, the closest game and the highest score by the Tigers. But here we go, number one serving. Natalia Perry, the senior defensive specialist. And a huge kill by number 15 on the Tigers, and that is Tessa Marshall. She is by far the tallest girl on the team. She is a six foot one senior. Being the tallest girl on the team and a senior, you think you'd want to feed her as much as possible, especially after that last kill. And number six, Emma Young with a nice attack. And that will be out of bounds off the blocker's hands. 19 serving 13 again. It is uh, the most points scored by the Tigers throughout the night. But if the Lady Dragons can finish off this last match, that will be the game for the night and also clinching playoff berth. And one more time, number 15 for the Tigers. So out of nowhere, Marsha, uh, excuse me, Marshall, the six foot one senior for Stony Point is uh, crushing it. And they are trying their best to close the gap. It is uh, 14 serving 19. By far the closest gap in double digits of the night. Again, uh, I know uh, Stony Point, they don't really have a chance to make playoffs. But keep in mind, these are rival schools in everything. Everything you can think of. Every sport, uh, you know, I don't know, debate team, chess match, who knows? Who knows what all these uh, the, the, these kids uh, face off going back and forth every year. But again, they are uh, rival schools. Never, ever, ever count out a rival team. Whether you follow college or professional, for any sport, you know what it's like. Conference is conference, division is division, and rivals are rivals. And speaking of, it looks like the Tigers will not go gently into thy good night, but uh, it's 20 serving 15. The Dragons are able to get the ball back here. Getting ready to serve is number four, Sarah Kylan, the junior. So again, 20 serving 15. Five more points for the Dragons. Not only do they finish off the Tigers tonight, but they also make playoffs once again. A beautiful shot by number three there. That's number three, Vinay Sapp. And she's a 5-6 outside hitter sophomore for the Tigers. So that was a beautiful shot towards the sideline with a lot of curving topspin. 16 serving 20. Like I said, Tigers are doing their best to close the gap, trying to stay alive. They too also have seniors on their team that want a last few set of memories, the last few points to play. Here we go, 21-16. Jolie Plummer. Getting ready to serve. No, actually, here we go. Number three, the senior Brooklyn Johnson getting ready to serve. Now, the last time she served, she went on about a four-point run. Three of those were pretty much not aces, but they were not returned or unreturnable. And a powerful hit and attack attempt by the Dragons, but unfortunately it will be blocked by the Tigers. And Stony Point Tigers serving 17 to 21. Forgive me when I call them the Stony Temple Pilots. It's an ongoing joke. But here we go. Speaking of, the Tigers are trying their best to scramble and keep it alive. But unfortunately for them, they cannot get it back over. One more point for your Lady Dragons. Lady Dragons are now up by five. 22 serving 17. Three more points, ladies and gentlemen. And the Round Rock Lady Dragons clinch a playoff berth. Oh no, Jolie Plummer serves it right into the net. And that's no fun for anybody. You know, she definitely wishes she could have that one back. 18 serving 22. Somehow the Tigers keep closing the gap. 
They were down by seven, then they were down by six, and then they're down by five. Now they're down by four. So really, uh, the Dragons can't really afford to keep losing two to one points to the Tigers and stay ahead for too much longer. Speaking of Tigers, they scramble to keep it alive. Oh, but a beautiful kill by the Dragons. There you go. That's number 11, L. Cassidy. Twenty-three serving eighteen. Here we go, number nine, Bailey Blackman, the junior right hitter. Blackman gets ready to serve. Two more points are all we need to close out the night and clinch that playoff berth. Oh, that went into the net. One more point. Here we go. This is not only match point but game point as well. One more point for your Lady Dragons. Here we go, Blackman to serve. And a tip by the Tigers. Dragons are all over it. Kylan with a little bit of a tip of her own. Blackman to Sarah Kylan. To Cassidy. Oh no, Cassidy gets blocked. Again, Tigers doing their best to stay alive. From here on out, the Tigers need every point. They need seven points in a row to win by two and to not lose for the night. Because one more point for the Dragons, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. But here we go. And the Tigers' very own libero gets ready to serve. Again, one more point for your Dragons. And they close out the night. And then they clinch that playoff berth. Here we go. And that's Kylan setting up. Beautiful job. And that's number 12, Juliana Rio. And that's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to Coach Diane Watson for one more great season, one more great night. The season's not over yet, though, ladies and gentlemen. One more regular season game uh, on Tuesday. Uh, and then after that, we can look towards playoffs. But again, tonight was senior night. One more time, I want to recognize those seniors. Number one, Natalia Perry, defensive specialist senior. Number two, Alyssa Bryan, defensive specialist, also a senior. Number three, Brooklyn Johnson, defensive specialist. Uh, number five, Abby Kylan, outside hitter. And let's see, last but not least, scrolling down the list here, Caitlin Kubala, middle blocker, number 16. Uh, once again, Coach Khaleesi, the mother of Dragons, Diane Watson getting the job done, not just for senior night, not just against Stony uh, Point, but for the season in general. They are uh, on pace to uh, look pretty good heading into playoffs. They're not just making playoffs, they're going into playoffs uh, really with uh, with that second, with that number two, number three seed berth. Uh, but again, uh, one more shout out to all the seniors uh, playing tonight. Thank you so much for four great years of volleyball. Thank you so much for a great night of volleyball. Good luck to you on Tuesday. Good luck to you during playoffs as well. Uh, I am Dallin with KMAX Sports, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this has been Round Rock Lady Dragon Volleyball. Uh, quick recap, 25-6. 25 to 11 and then 25 to 19. Uh, 3 and 0 out uh, for your Lady Dragons. Again, Dallin with KMAX Sports. We will see you next week. Uh, again, playoff berth. Congratulations to the Round Rock Lady Dragons and Coach Diane Watson. This is the KMAX Sports Network.